Talk is talk. And talk is cheap. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mel. To the returning subscribers, it's lovely to see you guys again. And thank you so much for your overwhelming love and support. To the new people, just don't lurk in the shadows. Click the subscribe button below and join the family. If you're anything like me, the most of what you know or believe about love, you picked up from TV, books, and magazines. As entertaining as the classic boy meets girl, boy sweeps girl off her feet, boy and girl live happily ever after story is, it's seldom a, an accurate representation of what happens in the real world. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at five hard truths that we need to be aware of in order to create a safe and healthy dating environment for ourselves and for the people we want to date. Truth number one, you can't make someone love you. Love cannot be forced. Love I money kids we. If someone doesn't love you, there is nothing that you can do to change their mind. Listen, you can gain weight, lose weight, go to the gym morning, noon and night. Get that job that pays your truckload of money. Shower that person with gifts. Do acrobatics and calisthenics in the bedroom. Be a listening ear, be hella supportive, and it will not be enough. Do you know why? Because for the wrong person, your best effort will never be enough. So do yourself a favor. Stop it. Find yourself someone who cherishes, respects, and enjoys you. Someone who actually wants to do life with you. Listen. In 2020 and beyond, we only want people who want us. We need to stop this thing of eroticizing toxicity and bad behavior. I know for some people that push and pull dynamic in a relationship, it um, scratches a psychological itch in them to prove that they're worthy and they're lovable and that they're so special they can fix someone or change someone's behavior. Can we just agree to disagree that no one here is Bob the Builder? So it follows you do not have the skill set or the ability to fix what you didn't break. Love isn't about hurting each other. It's not about power and it shouldn't be so hard. If you're in a relationship and it feels like you are climbing Kilimanjaro day in, day out, then there's a problem. Don't be with someone who triggers all your insecurities. Someone who treats you like yesterday's leftover sadza. Someone who doesn't cherish your heart. And someone who avoids emotional intimacy. Constant, constant peaks and valleys. Extreme highs and lows. Roller coaster emotions. That is not passion. It's unhealthy. Love is stable. It's pattern and it's routine. I know it sounds boring, but if we're going to break toxic patterns, toxic behavior patterns, then we need to break away from this Telemundo type of love where it's always, oh, oh, dramatics. It's not good for you. Truth number three, the honeymoon phase will end. At the beginning of a relationship, we fall in love with an idea and not a person. Because we do not know enough about this individual, our minds, clever organs that they are, fill in the gaps for us based on our past relationships and our attachments. So we tend to daydream, build up delusions about this person. The honeymoon phase is the best. It's this feeling of excitement, sexual arousal. And to be perfectly honest, low-key obsession. All you think about is that person which is wonderful, but like all things, it must come to an end. You'll find that as a relationship progresses, that individual steps out of the realm of the fantasy and into reality because you have enough data about them. The challenge that happens is that some relationships cannot sustain that transition into reality. So people will break up once the spark or the passion has dwindled Whilst for some people, they are able to make that switch from 24-7 obsession into a more slow and 
steady type of connection, which is the foundation of any good and healthy relationship. Truth number four, we are the rule and not the exception. I first heard of this theory from the 2009 blockbuster movie, He's Not That Into You. One of the character purports this painful, but I must say very realistic theory. Most people like to think of themselves or their relationships as different from others and special Whilst the case is, they are probably not. Considering yourself an exception is setting yourself up for failure. I know we've all heard that story that defies the odds, that defies the rules. I know you've heard of a friend of a friend of a friend who was in a similar situation as your own, who managed to turn their friend with benefits situationship into a relationship and they're so happy now. Or you've heard from a cousin of a cousin of a cousin uh, that they know someone whose married lover left their spouse for them and they now have two and a half kids, a dog and a white picket fence and are blissfully happy. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen for you. Or perhaps you've heard through the grapevine about someone who had a cheating significant other who reformed and is now the model citizen and you stop and you think that your F-girl or F-boy is going to change. It might never happen. And chances are, it won't. So it's better for you to read the writing on the wall instead of gamble with your future on a possibility that may never materialize. Truth number five. Believe actions and patterns, not words. Talk is talk. And talk is cheap. The real value lies in a person's actions. So we're going to look at some scenarios that we need to be super observant about because those are the ones that will bring out the truth in a person's behavior versus to what lip service they might be paying you. One, people make time for what they want. I'm going to repeat that again for my sister and my Hanzadzi in the back. People make time for what they want. You got that? We invest our time and our energy in what matters to us. So these excuses of work is crazy, they don't hold water. Listen, even Elon Musk, WhatsApp. So what is so special about this, your person, business kake, that they can't even respond to your message and they leave you on read or unread? Nothing. The truth of the matter is that they simply don't want to respond. So when someone shows you that you're not a priority, they are pretty much showing you that they do not value you or your time. Two, if they miss you, they will text you or call you. If they don't, it is what it is. Three, if they cheat on you, chances are that they are going to cheat on you forever, either in your face or behind your back. The decision is yours to make. Four, if they're a zero or low effort person, don't overcompensate to make up for the deficit. If someone is giving you a teaspoon of effort, you should give them a teaspoon back. Because you know what? Chances are that their effort is directed elsewhere and not at you. Five, don't circle the drain. If someone shows you who they are, believe them. If they've proven to you that they are selfish, flaky, inconsistent, unreliable, spineless, conceited, that's who they are. And if they've exhibited dating bad behavior patterns before, like ghosting, benching, breadcrumbing, orbiting, and so forth, then don't make excuses for their bad behavior. In 2020 and beyond, don't set yourself up for failure by circling the drain and getting caught up in old patterns and behavior. People are who they are, and it is not our fault, and it's not our responsibility to fix them or to make excuses for them. We have come to the end of our video for today. If you found it helpful or you enjoyed it, please thumbs up, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell below so that every time I post, 
you're the first to know. Till the next time, I catch you on the internet. Musalim Nyasha.